Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. This is Mike Talks Cars Podcast, Episode 58. News. In industry news, vehicle theft is becoming an epidemic. Manufacturers are working ever harder to find ways of theft-proofing your next vehicle. It used to be that alarms, coded keys or fobs, and tracking devices were all that was needed. At least, that was good for a moment. As vehicles became more and more sophisticated, so did the thieves. Today, the electronics that secure our vehicles are often the very things that make them vulnerable to theft. Today's thieves will just steal a signal from your remote to open the vehicle, tap into the OBD port and program a new fob into the system so they can start and drive the vehicle away. And they can do that very quickly. If that is how your vehicle is stolen, your fob also becomes useless. So, how do you protect your vehicle in today's electronic world? Here's some basics. Be careful where you park your vehicle. Don't store your key fobs close to an exterior wall and make sure you put them inside something, preferably metal. Don't lock or unlock your vehicle in public using the remote. Most new cars have a proximity sensor and a button on the door. Use the button on the door. Let's face it, if the thief really wants your vehicle, however, they will get it. Your best protections are still low-tech. Many of you will remember the club steering wheel lock. Well, it's still a great deterrent because it slows them down, so they will probably just choose someone else's vehicle to steal. And nothing really beats keeping your vehicle inside your locked garage. I am amazed at how many people use their garage to store a few dollars worth of junk that they really don't want inside their house, and leave sixty, eighty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of vehicles in the driveway. Just put a sign on your lawn. Please steal what you like. In new vehicle news, a top executive at General Motors has finally given us a hint at when the Chevrolet Silverado EV will start production. Production is currently slated for 2023. This is interesting news because Ford's F-150 Lightning goes into production in early 2022, putting Silverado about a year behind their Ford competitor. Silverado will be powered by GM's Ultium EV system, and we are looking forward to its debut at the Consumer Electronics Show on January 5, 2022. Knowing that we'll be waiting for Silverado to hit the streets in 2023 gives GM loyalists a bit of light at the end of the tunnel, and we'll start the countdown for them. Information about the new EV Silverado is still pretty scarce, but if I know GM, and I do, they'll use the next year to bring their own flavor to the electric pickup. Now for some musings with the trainer. Yesterday, I took a stroll down memory lane with you and talked about the first new vehicle that I sold. There was actually a little bit more to that story that I should share. It's important because it helped define the way I learned to look at each customer and each relationship with those customers as I continued on in my career, both as a sales consultant and as a manager. It also helped define my career as a trainer. When Mr. Johansson picked up his brand new Chrysler Cordoba from me the day after I sold it to him, there was a lot going on. In those days, the salesperson did everything. No F&I office. So I was pretty distracted while trying to make sure I got all the paperwork right, license plates on the car, car cleaned and ready. So when he showed up, signed the last of the paperwork, and walked around the vehicle, I wasn't paying as much attention to him as I probably should have been. We shook hands. He got into the car. I immediately headed for the office to drop off the paperwork, and I really wanted to post that sale on the board. As I was steaming through the showroom, my mentor grabbed me by the arm, turned me around, and said, You don't want to miss this. He walked me over to the window and pointed to Mr. Johansson as he was driving out of the lot. Just as the Cordoba's rear wheels dropped down onto the road from the sidewalk, my mentor made a rolling wave motion with his hand and let out a very satisfied, Ah! 
We stood there and watched the taillights until they disappeared. Then he looked at me and said, Now didn't that feel great? And he was right. It felt awesome. I watched every single set of taillights leave the dealership for every deal I made as a sales consultant. It became not just a a ritual, but a symbol for caring about and following up on each of those customers also. Try it. Make sure you aren't missing out on those little things that make doing what we do so enjoyable and make our customer relationships last. This is Mike Little reminding you that, hey, selling is fun. Go have a great day.